Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.in. Find your dream aviation and aerospace jobs at www.wingsofarrow.in. Now we are going to learn how to find induced drag coefficient of a rectangular wing. Consider a rectangular wing with an aspect ratio of 6, an induced drag factor 0.055 and a zero lift angle of attack of minus 2 degree. At an angle of attack of 3.4 degree, the induced drag coefficient for this wing is 0.01. Calculate the induced drag coefficient for a similar wing at the same angle of attack but with an aspect ratio of 10. Assume that the induced factors for drag and lift slope delta and tau respectively are equal to each other. Also for aspect ratio is 10 and induced drag factor delta is 0 0.105. Given data. Here the aspect ratio of the rectangular wing AR is 6 and induced drag factor delta is 0 0.055 zero lift angle of attack alpha suffix L equals 0 is minus 2 degree an angle of attack of the first wing alpha is 3.4 degree at this angle of attack induced drag coefficient C suffix di is equal to 0 0.01. Now, the question is what is the induced drag coefficient for a similar wing with different aspect ratio of 10 and induced drag factor 0 0.105. Assume that induced drag factor delta and the lift slope tau are equal to each other. Induced drag coefficient for a general wing can be written as C suffix di is equal to C suffix L square divided by pi into AR into 1 plus delta where C suffix L is the lift coefficient and AR is the aspect ratio and delta is the induced drag factor. We must recall that Although the angle of attack is the same for the two cases compared here, the value of lift coefficient is different because of the aspect ratio effect on the lift slope. First, let us calculate lift coefficient for the first wing with the aspect ratio 6. So we can write the lift coefficient C suffix L square is equal to pi into AR into C suffix DI divided by 1 plus delta. Here substitute the values of aspect ratio and induced drag coefficient and induced drag factor of first wing and solve we get the lift coefficient of the first wing is 0.423. From Prandtl's lifting line theory the lift slope of this wing is d c suffix l divided by d alpha where d c suffix l is the lift coefficient and d alpha is the difference between angle of attack and zero lift angle of attack after solving we have lift slope of the first wing is 4.485 per radian the lift slope for the airfoil can be obtained from the Prandtl's lifting line theory we can write a is equal to a naught divided by 1 plus a naught divided by pi into a r into 1 plus tau. Solving this equation for a naught, we get airfoil lift slope a naught is 5.989 per radian. Since the second wing has the same airfoil section, then a naught is the same. Then solve equation number 4 for aspect ratio 10. Then wing airfoil slope is 0.086 per degree. Now substitute the value of wing lift slope of second wing in equation number 3. 
we get the lift coefficient for the second wing is 0.464. Now we can find out the induced drag coefficient for the second wing. Substitute lift coefficient aspect ratio induced drag factor of second wing in equation number 1 and then simplify we get the required induced drag coefficient is 0.0076 this problem would have been more straightforward if the lift coefficients had been stipulated to be the same between the two wings rather than the angle of attack then equation number 1 would have yielded the induced drag coefficient directly did you know why is there a hole in airplane windows if you have ever been nervous about the little hole in your airplane window don't fret the hole is necessary to regulate cabin pressure airplane windows are made up of multiple panels so the hole helps the middle panel from becoming stressed with pressure during flight next time you have airplane questions about safety Rest assured that the tiny hole in your window is not a problem. What are the white trails that planes leave in the sky? Those white lines in the sky are called vapor trails or contrails. And they are the result of aviation fuel being burned. When the fuel is burned, it produces carbon dioxide and water, which condenses into tiny droplets behind the plane in the air. If you pay close attention, you can see that there is always a gap between a plane and the vapor trials. That's because it takes time for the gas to form as droplets. According to popular mechanics, sitting in the tail of an airplane improves chances of accident survival by 40%. If you have further inquiry or requested video, drop down to our mail wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com don't forget to subscribe for more updates for the time being take care stay blessed inspired and fly high